Hey, how's everybody doing today? We are live with Amanda. How are you doing today, Amanda? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, crazy day in the markets today. We're going to go through the whole markets. Uh, the title of today's show with our second episode now of Stocks and Stacks, and we are live everywhere, is we're going to focus on the debt ceiling today. We're going to talk about the jobs report. And we're going to talk about the AI bubble that we are in that looks like it burst today. So what do you think about the U.S. debt ceiling? We got it on the screen right now. Uh, what do you think? I think it's so insane. <laughs> Last week when we were here, I thought we had set everybody up for being able to trade what would happen if they had just sealed the deal. And here we are exactly a week later, and I'm like watching live reports to see if they've actually voted on it. It's just like a show and a half. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's crazy because, you know, it's, it's politics, right? And it's posturing. And you got one side trying to kind of make the other side look bad. Yeah. You got, you know, the Democrats that are trying to get this done because if they don't, it's going to hurt the election. You got the Republicans mm -hmm. that don't want it to get done because they don't like the deal. And right. they're also, you know, posturing because they don't want Biden to get reelected as well. So there's a lot of politics and posturing going on right now. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot of, you know, it sells newspapers. It gets people talking about it. I mean, we're talking about it. So it's clearly something that people are talking about. People are thinking about. People totally. are interested on. And it's creating a lot of volatility in the markets. I mean, a lot of stocks are hitting 52-week highs. Uh, yeah. We're in an AI bubble. We're seeing crazy things happen with artificial intelligence. Totally. And, you know, and so it's definitely something that is being talked about everywhere. And when you're thinking about the media, the media always wants to talk about what's trending. And this is one yeah. of the most trending topics. So. Um, As it should be. Like, honestly, I was looking into some details of why this is taking time. And it seems to me like when Biden finally came to the table at the last minute, he's thrown some pretty slimy things in here that can cause some harm to people. So it's like, yeah, we as investors want it to pass because we don't want the economy to completely fall apart because we're investing in this market. However... If this does pass quickly, it's going to cause a lot of harm to a lot of people. I don't know if you've read some of the details, but it's pretty intense, really. I haven't. I haven't really gotten into all the details. Uh, I did hear on Twitter that they uh, tried to strike out some of the wording and verbiage regarding Bitcoin and cryptos. They were trying yeah. to tax cryptos. So but they're that's trying to been wiped out. out. Yeah, they that took that out. That's right. So they, they try to take that out. So there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. Like I said, there's a lot of posturing back and forth. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. But at the end of the day, as an investor, we want a deal to get done. We want this debt ceiling to be out of the way. We want green pasture. We want, you know, we want to be able to feel like as an investor that there's nothing stopping us from making money in the market. And clearly this is like the big elephant in the room. And until this gets resolved, it's going to be difficult for us to feel comfortable about making large investments in the market. Right, but that's why we have to be fluid. It doesn't mean that we can't invest. It just means that you have to come in for a good time, not a long time. Like our our whole, like last week's whole entire session killed it all week. Like all our watch lists that we had put together was paying out every day throughout the week. Today was the first day that we saw a pullback on that, but that's why we have to remain fluid because if you weren't taking your profits, you probably saw a lot of them disappear today. But you want to know something I noticed? What's that? It's May 31st. I know. We're almost halfway through the year. Sell in May and go away never happens because we've had a green week every single. Yeah. I mean, there's been sectors that have been crap, but not what we've had. We've been killing it. So well, there's, after today, there's one more month until halfway through 2023. So wow. man, this year is flying by. There's a lot of crazy things happening. Let's take a look at the charts right now. Yeah, so you it. can see the NASDAQ is actually in the red today, uh, yeah. down 82 basis points. But when you look at the charts, you can clearly see the NASDAQ has been on a big uptrend for all of 2023. This is January, 2023. And look at where we are now. I mean, mm -hmm. that's 
massive, massive moves. I mean, we're talking about, we started the year at 10,700. Mm-hmm. We're now at 14,200 for the NASDAQ. Can you zoom out on the NASDAQ to like, from including like maybe put out the five year just so we can see comparison? Because honestly, yeah. if you look this at the, the NASDAQ, year. it's barely faltered. It seems like every time there's an economic complete disaster coming, the NASDAQ takes like a little pullback and then it ranges higher, which means tech is winning the economic war, I think, because NASDAQ is tech heavy, very oh, tech heavy. Yeah. And you can see we're like not that far away from all time highs on the NASDAQ. So it's been a really, really, really good run so far in the first five months of 2023 in the NASDAQ. And Mm -hmm. a lot of that has been powered by artificial intelligence and the hype and the excitement and the enthusiasm for artificial intelligence, which has really kind of taken over essentially. Yes, it has. And um, there's been a lot of talk about that. That's what we're going to, when we were talking about um, basically our session today, you were referring to AI as a bubble. And you kept saying, are we going to talk about the AI bubble? And I'm like, ah, yeah, but should we call it a bubble yet? Because the internet's been called a bubble for 30 years now. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's the million dollar question. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Like- a part of me feels like this is going to be a hot sector for a long time, but a part of me feels like it is overheated right now at this moment and it needs to pull back a little bit. And that's what we're seeing a little bit today. So we're going to talk about that because yeah, it's been that. so hot, right? Like so hot. So you have to, like, you see that today, a little bit of a pullback because like, look at the NASDAQ pulling back a little bit. Because it's right, but so we accepted hard. it. Like we just had like day after day after day of like twenty percent gain, thirty percent gain. Like yesterday, we had a couple of AIs that had gone up thirty three to thirty five percent. They were all on our list for last week. Those are bound to pull off because it's sell in May and go away. It's May thirty first. People had to take some profits. We can't just always go straight up without people taking profits. It's the summertime. Hundred percent. So this is the uh, S&P 500. You can see the trend line. This is the five-year. So a very clear, strong, aggressive trend line. And we're not that far from all-time highs on the S&P 500 either. So the market is actually But I think the S&P is going to suffer soon. But that's because of commercial real estate debt and a whole different ballgame that NASDAQ doesn't have to deal with. US 30, similar story. So did you know that Warren Buffett sold all his bank stocks? Except for a couple. As you should. Bank stocks have been getting crushed. We've been calling shorts on bank stocks since April. And I think it's a damn good idea because I know there's been other analysts that said, oh, no, no, we're going to do good. We're going to. And I'm like, really? Are you sure you're not just saying that for Bloomberg? Because I'm not so sure about that one. Let's take a look at gold. Let's take a look at gold. So the S&P 500, NASDAQ, obviously been doing well. Gold, uh, we've talked about this $2,000 mark. It just can't hold that $2,000 mark. Now, I know a lot of people that are gold enthusiasts are saying we're going to 3,000 gold. I've heard people say gold's going to 16,000. Like I've heard crazy Oh, it's a little bit far and beyond. I think that's like a little dreamy. There's not anything to say that gold is good. There's not enough gold being pulled out of the earth to sustain that. So good luck with that. I think a lot of these gold, you know, uh, they're just fans. making up numbers now because they want to be as cool as Bitcoin. That's what they're doing. Yeah, they're just they're just trying to, you know, trying to be like, oh, we're the next hot sector. You got to invest in gold. But gold's done well. I mean, we've we've gold seen has this done well, and it will always be a safe haven. Like boomers will always have gold in their in their portfolios. It's a safe haven asset. Lots of other countries, developing countries, developed countries, gold has always been one of their safe haven assets. But we now have to divvy that up with Bitcoin, which is a hell of a lot more portable. Just saying. So hell if I was investing in gold, I would not be buying it at 2000 or higher. Because yeah. until it proves to me that it can actually break that zone, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable buying it in that. Okay. Zone. What do you think would be the catalyst to break that zone? Personal opinion. Well, no, gold is a safe haven, so it would have to be some type of serious 
economic crisis. Like know, not from- signing the debt ceiling papers in time. Yeah, I mean, potentially, but we all yeah. know that they're going to eventually sign those. So I think it has to be something different. I think it needs to be something bigger. Well, they want it to sign, but it's being it's being refuted. So if they can't all get on the same page, it could extend into a drama. So the drama could cause that to fly. However, I don't think it would fly past 3K. I think what it would do is go up for the gold bugs and then come right back down. Because realistically, it's projecting there. Yeah. So, so every time gold gets to that 2000 mark, as an investor, you need to be aware that it is yeah. struggling to break that zone. It's it struggling is. to break that region. So you have to be aware of that if you're investing in gold or gold stocks yeah. or anything regarding gold. You have to realize that for whatever reason, everyone around 2000 is selling. And that's why the price continues to reject from that 2000 plus mark. And that's mm-hmm. why we're stuck in this like, 1964 zone which is right at 2000 so something bad happens we could rip to 2500 3000 it's possible but, but, it would have but to then be expect it to pull quickly. back to 2000 again <laughs> so i think it's just going to be leverage traders and retail traders who claim to be the gold bugs that are going to bring that up if there is a disaster but i think the big stuff is baked in like all these countries are stockpiling their gold a while back a while back. It's baked in, I think. This is the US dollar index. It's actually been trending up. Been uh, trending up. Not so, but look at though, when it trended up the last one, it was because there was some hope in the market. It came back down because there was some hope in the market. Now that fear is coming back in, that's why it's come up again because the fear is coming in. I expect it to still come back down after we have this debt ceiling stuff sorted. I think it's just volatile based on that. If you zoom out and you look, it's actually trending down. So I think it's going to hit like where I have that blue line level. You see that? It's definitely trending down. When in doubt, zoom out. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's trending down. However, yeah. If you look at it, where it's what it's been doing, it's been trending up. Clearly, look at that. Right, because that's of the risk. Clear. There's so yeah. much risk in the market right now with the economy that that's why it's going up. It's totally just risk and volatility because of what Biden's doing in the markets. Oh, speaking of, when's election? Does it start in August? All the campaigns start. You know what? I don't know. I can't tell okay. you. I haven't even I'll looked into that. that. Yet. Okay, cool. <laughs> I haven't even looked into that. So uh, for U.S. dollar, it has been trending down, but it is starting to break out. So it could be trying to break into a trend reversal pattern here because clearly for the last month it's it's up. But you can see it is trading at 75 on the RSI, which is the sell zone. So be careful here. Tread lightly. When it this comes to economy down. and politics, I think that's only gone up because of fear. It's going to come right back down, I think. But we're not financial advisors. Only for good times and great charts. All right. Bitcoin at 27,000. Yes. Now, we got to zoom out on that. You're in pretty tight. If we can zoom out um, just to see the the whole rhythm. This is the all-time chart. (laughs) It always looks good. You can't deny how good the all-time chart is. But look where that is. Look at that chart. It's a thing of beauty. So I was having this conversation with someone not long ago, and you and I have talked about this so many times. Bitcoin has 70% pullbacks in every time frame. That's what that was, and it's looking good. So when I saw people being dramatic, oh, it's pulling back, it's pulling back. Binance was pulling a whole bunch out of Australia. Did you know that? Binance Binance? Binance also pulled out of Canada, too. Right, right, right. Binance pulled right out of Canada, but Canada wasn't like the a big, big, big part of Binance. Australia has a big chunk in Binance. And what Binance just did in Australia is they were removing privacy coins. So they didn't mark Bitcoin as something they were removing, but it is one of the go-to exchanges is Binance in Australia. So they hold a big chunk so it looks like a lot of people are pulling out of Binance, their Bitcoin. So I think it's more being moved than anything else. Likely, 
if you're looking at how Bitcoin's working right now, likely what people are doing is pulling their binet, pulling their Bitcoin out and all their privacy coins, putting it into Tether or something similar. And I think it's going to come back up when the dust settles. But it was a, it's a substantial amount of funds that was being moved. So I think it's short-lived drama. I think that yeah. a lot of people are sleeping on Bitcoin. It's gone from 15,000 in November to 27,000 now. Clearly a very aggressive trend line up. Absolutely. So it has been doing extremely well. All the Bitcoin enthusiasts know this. But if you're not a Bitcoin enthusiast, you probably don't know this because nobody's talking about it. Bitcoin, hey. look at this chart this year. I mean, from 15,000 to 27,000. That's that, like 60%? Right yeah, How much percent is that? 60 or 70? It's a lot. Yeah, it's about, it's about 60%. And it's been as high as 80% this year when it hit yeah. 31, almost 32,000. So it's yeah. got a nice trend. It's got these normal pullbacks before it makes these moves. And it looks like it's doing another pullback before it might make another big move up. Yeah, I think so as well. I really think that it was only coming down because people were moving things. And I don't see any other reason why it's not going to come back up. But we shall see. What's next? Remember, guys, what? full disclosure, I am a holder of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Everything um, we talk about is for Bitcoin. information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence. Please do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss. And past performance is not always an indication of future results. We're investors just like you guys. We're making investments. And sometimes these investments can be very volatile and very risky. So please proceed with caution. Uh, this is U.S. oil. So U.S. oil, you can see this dip in um, 2020 when it actually <laughs> went minus. That was a pretty crazy time in history of oil. That and was it, the world was falling apart, right? That's when everything yeah. closed. Nobody was going anywhere. We were all locked in our homes, getting vaxxed. If you were, um, that was a pretty big time in history, but there's some catalysts coming up for oil. We talked about this last week. We said, if this debt ceiling gets sorted out before we come back, I expected oil to spike. We haven't got it sorted out. So it's really just been sitting there. I still expect the same, but there's a big catalyst coming for oil. June 4th. So... <laughs> Imagine this, okay, on a great day, let's just say that they can, so today the debt ceiling is supposed to be the final vote today. If they final vote today, it has to then go to the Senate. So it's not even over on the final vote. It has to then get voted through the Senate. So default, final default day, according to Yellen, is going to be the 5th of June. But what happens on the 4th of June? OPEC. The OPEC meeting happens on the 4th of June. So this is when like Putin and Saudi Arabia and they all come to the table to decide how they're going to roll out. If you're going to get any, and if you're going to get any, how much is it going to be? Do you see? So that is, that could be a very big catalyst because word on the street and I don't blame them since there's oil refineries being bombed in Russia and whatnot. I can't blame them for keeping the prices pretty tight and keeping the supply pretty tight, right? Yep. So if supply is tight, if the U.S. dollar continues to sink, um, but they still raise a debt ceiling, that should be a juicy catalyst for oil. So oil's still waiting. This, sorry, I was just going to say oil's been in this range of like 65 to like to 83. 80. And yeah. it's been stuck in the zone for like the last six months. Yeah. So it's like stuck in the zone. Uh, oil was the darling of last year. Obviously, every year is different. This year, it's been the complete opposite. It's pretty much been a dog. And yeah. AI has taken over. So you just need to be aware of that. But as an investor, if you wanted to get into oil, I mean, you literally could be buying oil time. now for half of what it was last year. Well, so when we get into our oil stocks, you'll see. Like, we're bringing them back because we've had even more of a dip. Because I said last week... Don't touch these until we have the debt ceiling deal sorted because that's the catalyst we need to make them run. And we've had some more pullback and they look juicy right now. And we're days away. All right. So now we're going to get into some stocks. And obviously the number one AI stock out there is NVIDIA. You can see the chart and the trend. It's just absolutely unreal. So the stock that was at a hundred bucks in October <laughs> and of last year and now we're talking about a stock that hit 419 dollars 
just yesterday. And Can we do pulled, that for this week on it? Yeah, is it and possible? It's just pulled, and it's just pulled back a little bit today. So you can see what happened mm -hmm. in the last five days. So okay. this huge move from 305 to yeah. 380, and then this move to you know over 410, it, I think it hit 419, and now mm -hmm. it's starting to pull back because they did announce that they're going to sell $10 billion in securities, which is obviously typically a very dilutive uh, event and brings the stock price down. And, and a lot of hedges holding them have sold. Well, a lot of shorters have been going after NVIDIA too. So mm -hmm. the shorters are attacking them. The profits are being decided, taken. The profits are being taken. The, uh, the companies decided this is an all-time mm -hmm. high, so it's a perfect time to sell securities. Yeah. So it's like a perfect storm for you guys to take your profits if you're in this trade. Or if you're shorting it, probably a perfect a perfect storm to short this because it's up like, you know, at $400, it was up 300% since October of last year. Uh, yeah. they're, rate, they're selling $10 billion in securities. It just mm -hmm. hit all-time highs. I mean, there's all these reasons. And then all the shorters are saying it's overpriced and it's an AI bubble. This well, we talked about it last thing. week. It was already hitting the top. As soon as we finished our session on Wednesday, they reported earnings that were ridiculous. So it broke that high at the end of the day. That was it last week. If you zoom out, I have like to a month or so on there. I have nice markups in that chart. We just had to yeah, this, get. This is my one month chart. I don't see anything. Okay, go to wait one year then. Three months, six wow, months. Wow, you got all these indicators on there. Um, okay, I had the chart marked up. I guess it's not. Um, anyways, I wrote a target for that. It seems to be missing. However, doesn't mean because it's coming down that you need to stay away. It's still they're they're making moves. What needs it to be looked at and it's missing right now. But you need to look at some resistance. It just had a big spike. When you look at that big spike that we just had, it doesn't mean it's going to come and barrel down. It just means that it's going to have a pullback. This is your chance to decide with yourself what you think is a fair entry for the next run. It's not going to stay down. I was thinking, yeah, I don't think it's going to stay down either. I think, you know, for me, if like, I'm probably like, this is way past me buying it, but if I was going to buy it, I would want to see it back to 300 or lower to even think, think about test. an entry. To Where were we at before that big spike? What was the number? 300. Before all that green? Yeah, it was at 300. Perfect. It was at yeah, 300. Exactly. I'm with you 100%. So for me, I'd like to see it get back to 300 and then I would think about it. But I mean, this thing could go back to 100. Who knows? You know, so you got to be really careful. I'm not suggesting I'm going to buy it. I, I, I'm not even really even thinking about buying it, but I know there's a lot of people buying it. Like yesterday, Jim Cramer was telling everybody to buy it. Yeah, but Jim, Jim Cramer is a paid man on the hype train. He's yeah, paid and, the broadcaster. They're paying him to tell you. What that. I was going to say is that typically when Jim Cramer tells you to buy, that is the signal to sell. Exactly. So when he told everyone to buy yesterday, you can clearly see it's down 4% today. Okay. Everybody's doing the opposite of what Jim Cramer said. That's right. So if, you're because... of, if you're part of Jim Cramer's club, you are getting assaulted because he's typically giving you the worst advice ever, telling people how to buy a stock at a 52 week high. Well, he gets paid to tell people to come in so that all the hedge funds can sell to all the stupid people listening to him. It's really like, seriously. That's yeah, why you say do your own TV. There's a TikTok, uh, sorry, there's a Twitter handle called Inverse Kramer that's there's a huge amount and all they do is do the opposite of everything that Kramer says and it's yep. up like over 70% this year. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at uh, micro strategies. But did you want to talk a little bit about the jobs report? Um, yeah, I think we should. But that was actually something, let me see if I can pull up. I wanted to mention that. So the jobs report came in really strong, right? Really strong. Yeah. yeah, it did. So word on the street last rate hike was if jobs still come in strong, we shouldn't have to rate hike. However, if there's going to be trillions of printer money going on the printer, then I have a funny feeling that Powell is going to say, I think we should hike the rate since all these people have jobs now, they can afford to pay me more. What do you yeah, think? That sounds about right. 
As long mm-hmm. as the economy stays strong, Powell will continue to increase rates. Exactly, because it gives him backing. Like I've heard some people okay. say, no, 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 if the economy is strong, he'll lower it. I'm like, no, 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 no. If yeah. the economy is strong, that's more that he can juice off you guys. That's right, because he, his, 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 his rationale is that it doesn't make a difference how high we continue to raise the rates. The economy maintains to be strong, mm-hmm. so we can continue to maintain to increase these rates so that we can get our inflation number down to that 2%. And he's been adamant about getting it down to 2%. And the only way to get it down to 2%, the only tool he has is to continue to increase interest rates. So he knows that's the only thing he can do. And if he doesn't do it, he's not going to get to that 2%. So he's going to have to keep increasing rates, whether we like it or not. Yep. And so I think that's coming and I think it's going to be ugly. And I think so many people are thinking it's not, but I think you and I are on the same page in this. So yeah, it's disturbing, but you've got to buckle up, right? At least we're going to be looking to the right sectors. So this is Michael's strategy. You can oh, yeah. see that it's been all over the place. Uh, as Let us zoom out on Michael's strategy because you're just kind of zoomed into the consolidation area right now, but it's pretty much at the bottom. So you, know, if you well, can move look out to the one year. One year. This, is the, this is the one year chart. Okay, zoom out. You you want to see a five year? Uh, maybe go five year then. There we go. At least this you can see year. like the true rhythm, right? So how long has that consolidation been? Two years now? No, that was just one year. That was the one year chart. It was only a one year consolidation, right where your Correct. thing is. Okay, cool. Correct. That's not so bad. So one year of consolidation, and it's been pretty much sitting at that high. The cool thing about MicroStrategy is that he's pro-Lightning. So the Lightning Network on Bitcoin has made so much possible. And what I heard about MicroStrategy is he's working with companies like Sony, Disney, all these guys saying, Amazon, we can do these reward programs with Satoshis, with Bitcoin. So basically his examples, if you can listen to his keynote on lightning about his conference, it's pretty impressive. He was talking to companies saying, okay, well, if you give me 500 million, I can get you way more in your advertising dollars through using Satoshi rebates than anybody else. And by the sounds of things, he had a lot of interest. So I think that can get really good. Another thing he said was, He's, he just finished teaching a lot of companies how to use Bitcoin as a hedge for economic debt because so many companies have had to buy into bonds and everything else that we know are losing value. The reason that MicroStrategy is gaining value is because he's hedged with Bitcoin. So it seems like there'll be a lot more following in his footsteps or just buying a MicroStrategy to follow along. I think it's ready to go. Well, it's going to follow the price of Bitcoin. So you can see it's yeah. come back down from 300 to 130. That was when Bitcoin was kind of, you know, hitting its lows. And mm-hmm. now since Bitcoin's made its big move this year, it's followed the same trend and it's gone from 130 to where it is today, right around 300. So yeah. just like Bitcoin has made a big move so far in 2023, MicroStrategy has followed Bitcoin and it will continue to follow Bitcoin because MicroStrategy is the largest holder of Bitcoin that is an institutional company on right. the stock market in the world. So they're yeah. holding huge amounts of Bitcoin. 25,000, I think it's close to now. Yeah, huge amount and billions worth. And they're going to continue to buy Bitcoin. They're never yeah. going to stop. That's the business model of sure. MicroStrategy is that they're just going to continue to buy Bitcoin, <laughs> raise money, buy more Bitcoin, raise money, buy more Bitcoin. Michael Saylor has agreed that he compounds. So he does sell at highs and compound low. He did admit that. He compounds. He does sell the high and compound the low. So which is right. what do we let's got? Go on to, let's move on to Google. So Google's been one that we've talked about. I personally personally owned it. Um, yeah. I've recently sold it and took profits. It's made a nice move. And Google was just way too heavily oversold. Let's go up to the five year. Everybody was moving except for Google, and now Google's starting to move. Yeah, and it's moving beautifully. Like, look at this. So we topped out at, in what year, 2019 or 2020, did we top out in Google? 2021. 2021. So if you look, we're really not far away from returning. 
which is pretty damn awesome. But these couple, these next couple that we're going to talk about, this is the hottest stocks of right now. So that's NVIDIA, MicroStrategy, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Oracle. That's what's holding the NASDAQ up. When everything else falls, we just got to look to tech because tech seems to always save us in some way. So yeah, that, that chart looks like Google's at a high, but it's actually not. It's kind of a little bit. But the thing is, it is set for a pullback. How are my charts changed? None of my markups are on here. I have no idea, but there's nothing we can do about it now. Okay. So, anyways, anyway, so Google, Google has been on an epic tear. You can see it's been moving. Uh, I think it's a good quality company that everyone should consider owning in their in portfolio. I've bought it, made money on it, and I'm looking for another pullback. Uh, but I don't know if it's coming because right now it is really, like you said, you know, it's, it's getting high and it looks like it could go higher because it still looks cheap when you compare it to like well, NVIDIA. But I do think if you want to have a best entry, it does look like it's due for a pullback because when you look, I had a line here. Do you see that consolidating area right before that green spike? Yep. That where, yeah. Yep. Yep. Right there. That would be my target. So I do think it can come because we're in some economic instability and there's going to be some dramas on tech right now still. So also it's still summer. So unless Google does anything exciting, I think we can get that target for the next rip up, but we shall see. Yeah. So if you could get in at a hundred or lower, I think that would be a safer entry point for Google. It <laughs> was just at that hundred dollar mark. It was at 80 when I was buying it. You know, it made a nice move. I sold it. It's gone even higher. And now it's like, okay, uh, will it get back to 100 or, or lower? We'll see. But <laughs> it's, like I said, a quality company. It hasn't gone up as much as some of the others like NVIDIA and AMD. Uh, but it's another one that's an AI play. So you got to look at Google as a major AI play. This is the largest, one of the largest tech companies in the world. They're sitting on a ton of cash. And they are getting into chat GPT as well. So definitely another AI play to look at and another one that I've owned that I've recently sold and done well with that's starting to make a move. And we've talked about a lot and I've put in my top tens consistently is Amazon. And you can see Amazon also making this huge move. Very, similar chart, to Google. very, very similar chart to Google. <laughs> Um, okay. So again, I don't know where this orange line came from, but either way, can we get rid of that? You want me to get rid of the trend line? Well, it's like, I really did have these all marked up and it looks a little odd. Um, yeah. So Amazon, look at that nice, it's a stairway. It's like a damn stairway to heaven. <laughs> It is. Look at those. If you look at those levels of pullback, each one is higher than the next. So we have higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. If you get in at the top of this green line, you're going to have a pullback. Just look at where the last one sat because we're on the way back up. Amazon has done so much restructuring and good things to keep themselves going. I still think that we're going to see these higher lows. Just expect the red pullback in between. Don't get drama on the day unless you zoom out and take a look. Can we zoom out to the chart to see the 2021 um, rhythm? Yeah, see that? It's gorgeous. Like it's totally left consolidation. It consolidated for quite a while. It totally left that and it's on the way back up. What do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, we've been talking about Amazon and Google all year and now they're starting to make a move. Like I yeah. said, it's been in my top 10 list like consistently mm -hmm. because it was very <laughs> obvious that it was undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed when you compared yeah. it to its peers. We've just saw that Apple today hit a 52-week high. NVIDIA yeah. just hit a 52-week high. But Amazon yeah. and Google haven't. So and these next two that we're going to talk to talk about are pretty much at 52-week highs. So I think we need to talk about them to say, be aware. <laughs> when you're looking at opportunities like Amazon and Google that haven't hit their 52 week highs. I don't understand why people are so wrapped up on doubling down in a video before it's due for a 30% pullback. Oh, that's mine. Nice. Um, okay. So Microsoft. Okay. Here's Microsoft. 
Microsoft is coming into again. All my charting is missing. This is terrible. Okay, okay. Amanda, you've already made that clear. I How know. Are going to say that it's so hard. Okay, so Microsoft is pretty much hitting an all-time high. I don't think that it's time to be aping in. But here's the thing about Microsoft. There's so much in the news and the analysts keep saying Microsoft is the number one AI, the AI giant, the AI giant. Yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but things pull back. So Microsoft is hitting an all time high. If you take a look at before that started to spike green, the last time we were consolidating, you will see that every time Microsoft has had those big spikes. So the last time Microsoft hit its all time high, can you mark where it pulled back to? It was pretty deep. It was about 30% too. Yeah. Just a little higher. Right no, like 16. the first peak. So where it hit that all-time high, and then where did the first pull back end, that first wave before it rebounded a bit? There you go. That's a big percentage that it pulled back. So I think that should be your target on Microsoft because these things happen. And there's some drama coming with AI and the government. And I think the campaigns are going to bring that up. But we'll get into that more in the AI stuff. Um, Oracle. This is another one hitting an all-time high and getting tons of news pump. So Elon just bought a ton more Oracle. Um, they're a cloud computing, and they are a big deal. But again, they're getting tons of press, but they're due for a fat pullback. So just be very, very careful. Doesn't mean they can't go higher because I think they will, but just be super careful about where your entry points are. What do we have next, Rich TV? Sorry, I was just trying to look at some of you guys' comments. I apologize. I didn't see all you guys' comments here. Uh, ah. A lot of comments, people coming through, dropping comments. I appreciate the support, guys. I appreciate the comments. I'll try to share them here as much as possible. Um, thank you guys for sharing your, your comments. appreciate that. And maybe I should. Should I put the chat? Yeah, I think the Bank of Canada will as well to you, Crypto Man. Oh, okay. One thing about the Bank of Canada, what the Bank of Canada did is they said they weren't going to hike rates, but what they did is they hiked taxes and they raised things like a minimum wage. So in a country where a lot of people are on minimum wage, as you guys know on percentages, if you raise the minimum wage, the taxes on that wage will be higher. So that's where it seems like they're getting their money from. Personally, is this AI that we have next? Sorry, I was just trying to go through some of the messages here. Just try to share them. Give me one minute here. I'm just trying to share everyone's messages. I appreciate you guys' messages. This is great. Thank you. And we'll try our best to get to some of them as we can. Why well, aren't um, they invest in high interest bonds? Yeah, these days bonds are what is screwing the big companies. And that's what MicroStrategy was using Bitcoin to hedge against. So bonds have been hurting companies. Like bonds are, are what put um, First Republic and Signature Bank in the ground. So it's tough. All right, so here's AI, and AI has been absolutely on fire. This is probably one of the best pure play AI stocks out there. There we go. Now look at that. Look at those spikes that we've had. They've been unbelievable. So yesterday, we finished off even like yesterday, we finished off AI huge, like 33% at the end of the day. Yeah, that big candle, those, those yes. big candles right there, yeah. Yeah, we had a 33% at the end of the day. So to see today, just before we came on session and pulled back to 10%, big deal, <laughs> big deal. I think it is completely fair to see it pull back again. Um, you'll have to mark this, yep. that consolidation area. Yep. It must have been these RSIs and stuff that pushed it off. $20. Um, yeah, no, not there. At the high of the last spike. I, I know for me personally, I would not buy this higher than 20 bucks. I wouldn't um, even touch it. I can't see that. Bucks. Where's the $20 line? Can you show where, us? Yeah, where I put the line. Oh, I would. I would. I would go a little bit higher than that to the top of those first green candles, I think is just fair. Because anything lower, you could risk getting back in. Because if you can see, we're growing higher lows. So just trying to get in at the last low, you could likely miss it because we're getting higher lows and higher lows. Well, the last low was 16. So I still think if you can get it at 20 or lower, and it's given us the chance to get in at 20 or lower, like four times. 
Uh huh. Exactly. So for me personally, I would like to buy it for under 20. I don't think I'd feel comfortable buying higher than that because this is not a company that's profitable. This is definitely riding the AI hype and bubble. It is, but there's also money. big money government grants being pumped into AI. So Tesla doesn't make money either, but they get a ton of government grants. Um, so that's what brings their profit books up. So um, I think AI, C3 AI being the top AI pick, I think a fair range, like a Mozone, would be the top of this green candle, the last high before the wick. If you can show us what that number is, it would be awesome. The top of the which green candle? There's like a bunch the last of one. Not not this last rip, the last rip. This one. Move to the left? No. Before it pulled back. This yeah. One. Yeah, what's that number? $28. Yeah, I would not buy this at 28 bucks. No I, I think I think halfway between there is a fair zone. So you said that's 20 to 28. For me, I think being in around 24, 25 would be okay. You could risk having a 10 or 20% pullback before it spikes. But for me, at least I'm in. So you can play it either way, right? You can low ball or you can go in the mo zone. You just have to be comfortable with waiting the time it takes and the risk because that's how we trade, right? Just be careful um, with it, guys. You can see it's extremely volatile. And this thing goes up and down really, really fast. We got a lot to move. I don't personally think it's even fair to compare this to Tesla because Tesla actually makes I didn't money. compare it to Tesla. I talked about government grants. Didn't no, compare it to Tesla. Tesla, Tesla doesn't all. make money. Tesla makes billions of dollars. They may not be profitable, but AI okay, we'll doesn't make Tesla money. later, though. It's also on the list. I know. We're in AI yeah, doesn't yeah, make any now. money. <laughs> so until they actually make money, like billions of dollars, like a Tesla, I don't even think we can even put them in that category. Okay, well, I'm like trading a, a this video. sector because I think it's a great sector that's starting out, that's in a bubble, that's been making us money. So we've been riding these rhythms. So I'm just saying there's ways to make money in this sector. You can stay away because they're not making money or you can take the trade. But this is one that you brought up today. I never knew of before. I'm excited about it. IDAI? IDAI is another AI stock that had some really big news today and is ripping up 22%. Yeah, they like crazy, right? So what are these guys? Because like, I liked this chart. When you look, though, every single spike, those pullback candles are hard. So if you're going to play this, be aware that those pullback candles come hard and fast. Yeah, are those so daily candles? These, you see these huge moves, and then it comes back down. And you see these huge right. moves, and it comes back down. And now it's making another one of those huge moves. So you need to be careful. Right. There's a lot of aggressive sellers in the stock, right? Exactly. So I would gonna... wait until that move finishes and you see where it comes back down to. Because it yeah. always seems to consolidate before going again. But at least we're on it. MWRK. Well, before I said, one thing I liked about IDAI, it has a really tight float. Only 6 million shares. That okay. is really tight. The other thing is, it's 52-week high is $10. It's 52-week low is $1.30. So mm -hmm. it's currently at about 250. So if you can get this, you know, at that $2, 150, 130 range, that's where I would feel more comfortable. Because yeah. like we said, every time it does these big spikes up, it comes down aggressively because that's there's right. aggressive sellers in the stock. So just be careful. Like I said, a lot of this AI. All of these uh, AI ones are pulling back hard. So it is, you have to make sure you tap it at the lowest point that you can or feel comfortable. MWRK just wanted to quickly say, we had this mark, we called it at five cents. It's gone up a hell of a lot more. Yesterday it had a 33% day. Today it was up to 12 and a half. Where is it at now on games? 13 and a half cents. And okay, so I would be super careful i think it's just about ready for a pullback so if you look at this chart the bottom of these the time to get in is around can you mark the bottom of these spikes the bottom yeah Makes what's sense. that that's i think about the good level between eight and ten cents um eight preferably but any more than that you risk taking a crap on it so be careful lemonade can we go to lemonade Absolutely. Lemonade. Okay. L M N D. And you can see it's also having this nice trend up here. Yes. yes. But it looks, if you zoom out to the proper chart, you'll see like the one year, even you will see that that recent action, it's bouncy, just like all the rest 
really bouncy. So there's big moves. Like we were seeing 20% days last week, then we see a 12% day, then a little pullback, then another. Just tap the bottoms. There's so much money in these, but you got to watch where you get in. Also, sound is our last AI that we'll talk about. And this one has been in your top 10 a couple of times, right? Sound. Yeah, uh, it was in my AI top 10 list. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, man, I missed my charting. Put a lot into it. All right. Where are we at right now? I was at, I was down three and a half, three point eight percent when I looked last. Where are we now at it? Two dollars. It's at three dollars right now. But what's the percentage? It's red. Uh, three percent. Oh, okay, that's not so bad. It's already coming up on the day. Awesome. So it's a little bit more of a slow mover, but when it has a fat day, it has a fat day. These guys all like to run together. So I'd wait to the pullback of that little consolidation area, that little zone, because that's where it's been bouncing off of. Do you see that tight? There we go. That, I think, is a good target. So that's pretty much a mo zone where you just drew. I think so it's yeah, fair. Like $2. Like two dollars yeah. would be a better entry. Yeah. Two dollars or under two dollars if you could get in. Um, always better to hunt for a really good entry. It's always going to give you a better chance to win as an investor. Yeah. As a right, because you'll take home a higher percentage. Like, what's the point of getting something in the top and getting five percent out if you could just wait a week for a pullback like we're seeing now? Let it pull back for a couple of days and then get yourself a twenty. Um, okay, we got to get into oil. Enbridge. Do you realize, can you take a look at Enbridge now? Yes. So we have the Canadian and the American Enbridge. If you can zoom out, you'll see there's some really good target levels, but we have to actually see the visual chart. There we go. Do you see the bottom of that last spike? I took off all the indicators and it still doesn't show any of your charts. Oh, no, you, you just took up, like you, you removed all the drawings. That's what you did, but that's okay. No, I removed, you, I removed the indicators. Yeah, and the drawings. I removed the RSI and the MAGD. Okay, these were all marked up, but yeah, they I, just got removed. Um, either way, if you could just mark the con last consolidation on Enbridge. Yeah, right about there, actually. That's a good one. Right where you just had your scanner. Um, move it down a bit to the bot. Move it, yeah, down, 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 down. There we go. I think, no, a little bit too high. I'm looking at, do you see that M over to the left before it started to move up? Yeah, just before it started to move up to that high. Anyways, yeah, right about there. I think we're going to see it come pretty close to that while we're waiting for this um, Senate level to get worked out. But either way, the dividend on Enbridge now is close to like over 7%. And they have a payout in August. It's pretty juicy, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's just the I think the oil trade is a really tough trade right now. So I think with I these catalysts of the debt ceiling being raised and the OPEC meeting, I think we have a good catalyst for oil. But it's been coming down, and when things come down, depends on what kind of trader you are. If you're a momentum trader, you're going to be scared of this because it's coming down. But we just targeted a really well supported level, and if you're a bottom up trader, this looks pretty juicy. So I think oh, that's Enbridge in the U.S., right? Yeah, $35 in the U.S. and 47 in Canada. Then we have Marathon. Can we go to Marathon? Yep. MRO. MRO. Marathon oil. That's right. So MRO is actually already starting to pick up. But I think until we have this Senate vote on the debt ceiling, we're still going to come down to the bottom of that support. But we're close. And it's juicy. There's about 35% left in that. You can see um, the one year how it's been like really trending down, guys, because the price of oil has come down. So a lot of these companies that had their big year last year are all coming back to reality. Yeah. Let's go fast through the oil because we only have 10 minutes. And I have yeah, some really good stuff to talk about. It'll kind of, all these charts look the same, right? Last year, they all had their big year. Oil had the, you know, the best year of its like history. And now everybody's coming target. back to reality. Exactly. Um, all right. Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobile, this is the one year. So they've actually been able to hold pretty strong considering. Exactly. The chart, they're holding much stronger than the most. 
but I think they're just about ready to target. So basically, instead of having to worry about what number do I target, when this debt ceiling gets passed, and then we see OPEC saying, guess what, we're keeping it tight. I think that's a huge catalyst for oil, and we haven't seen those catalysts for a while. So not a financial advisor, but watch. Then we have Occidental. Occidental, these charts all look the same. Last year, they were all going up. This year, they're all coming down. Yeah. Um, now we have, what's next? ConocoPhillips. ConocoPhillips, exactly the same, but tight consolidation. So it looks like sellers are pretty much giving up. Um, and then just waiting for the go. Then. All right. Now we're getting into some crypto stocks. Mara, now at 980. <laughs> okay. Mara just keeps surprising and surprising. If you go take a look at Mara's okay. news right on their website, Marathon Digital, you're going to be mind boggled. They're doing amazing things. And the Saudi Arabia, we talked about that. They had a huge day the last couple of days and they're on a small pullback. I think set your target and go. Then we have Listen, BTBT. These are going to move with Bitcoin. If Bitcoin moves, we're going to see this explode. If Bitcoin oh, goes so. down, these are Bitcoin explode. miners. They're Bitcoin miners. So when Bitcoin goes up, so does their balance books. Here's um, BTBT, one that I own. Just hit I know, a 50, uh, 52 week high. Yeah, just hit a 52 week high today. I do own it. Um, and As do it's I. Doing quite well right now. We've yeah, been so we calling this it. one for quite a while. I don't know when that pullback is going to come, but it's not looking like anytime soon. Um, yeah, really well. ITF and HUT, pretty much similar story. They haven't taken off like BTBT and BITF. However, if you pay close attention, the sector likes to cycle. So when one spikes up, people will sell and put it onto the next big guy. So being that BITF, BTBT, HUT8, Hive, they're all around a similar price point. You'll find when one spikes, those profits are going to move into the next. So there's a little arbitrage hint for you. And these are all trades that I would be looking at the price of Bitcoin very, very closely before you buy. If the price of Bitcoin is going up, these will most likely go up. If the price of Bitcoin goes down, these will most likely go down. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, Rive. Here's Hive, very similar chart. You can see the same type of chart where they all kind of dropped last year. And now they're all trending back up because the price of Bitcoin is going back up and they're following the price of Bitcoin. Here's Riot, same thing. Here's the... Uh, the one year, if you look at the five year on Riot, you can see it's been as high as $78. That's when Bitcoin hit its all time highs. It's now back at 11. If Bitcoin hits back to all time highs, which we believe it will in the next couple of years, we could see this go back to 50, 60, $70. So there's a huge gap to fill here for a lot of these stocks if and when Bitcoin gets back to those all time highs. Yeah, exactly. Then, the main sector I wanted to talk about now because it's May 31st. What happens in June in most people's families? People go and on vacation. Summertime. Right. <laughs> summer vacation. So who makes money during summer vacation? Travel companies. <laughs> Travel companies. These are at beautiful entries. The catalyst is that kids are out. People are traveling. There's no COVID this summer. There might be. But it's not stopping anybody from leaving anywhere. So COVID is not stopping travel this summer. Holly freaking Louia. Either way, these charts are nice. Can you zoom out? On That's booking? the five year. That's okay. the five year. So take a look at booking.com. Booking.com has always been like a giant when it comes to booking. But to me, I think they're quite similar to Airbnb and the fact that they are selling off rooms. They're selling off all those kinds of stuff. It's for travel, short-term travel. They just had an all-time high. But if you look down at Airbnb, they're not even there yet. <laughs> so I think when you look at the arbitrage opportunity, booking is starting to pull back. It's starting to have those wick candles at the top of that high. But Expedia, which is next, can we go to Expedia? Yep. Yeah. Expedia and the next one, Airbnb, are a very similar Thing. So Expedia is hotels and airlines, and yet they haven't had their big spike yet. Airbnb is homes and other things. They haven't hit their spike yet. So clearly the money's in travel. It's just up to us to find those good targets. I think Expedia and Airbnb are at wicked targets. I've actually traded Airbnb twice this year already. I haven't got nice. back in. Yes. Um, but I was buying company, TNL. 
Ah, TNL. Okay, this one's interesting. I didn't know about TNL before. They have a dividend. It's close to 5%, like 4.8 something. And they are the top ETF, um, travel ETF, they are travel, um, held by over 30 of the top hedge funds in the U.S. So this is like really, really heavily held by, te- by hedges. What's our, yeah, what is 4, it? 4.87 dividend yield. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty nice, eh? Yeah, almost And a juicy upside. So that was a new one to me, but I was pretty excited about it. This is win. Win resorts. Okay, now this is where we're going into Vegas because now that COVID's over, everyone's back at Vegas. Las Vegas has been saying they've been having like record pre-COVID levels of travel, which means that is going to show up on the books. And it's summertime. So by the end of summer, this is all going to come up. So the Vegas ones that I think are set to capitalize are Win. So this is Win Las Vegas and they're everywhere. Win Resort. This one's MGM now. Sorry. MGM is topping out, but you can see the arbitrage opportunities. So you have some that are at highs and some that are at lows, but they're actually comparable companies. Very comparable companies. Um, MGM, Las Vegas Sands. LVS, Las Vegas Sands. So you can see its all-time high is 145. Currently right. sitting at 55 and hit a low of, wow, like $2. Um, yes. You know, and during the pandemic when we couldn't go anywhere, right? No, that was 2008. The pandemic, oh. it went to uh, about $30. Okay, $30. so we're not far off from their bottom then. Well, like the pandemic price, bottom. So I, I call every bottom the pandemic bottom because that's like our most recent drama in our lives. How much percentage do we get back to that high? Um, to get back to its all-time highs from here would be like... To get back to that consolidating high. Uh, about 50%, 50-60%. No dramas. No dramas. Then we have Red Rock Resorts. RRR, Red Rock Resorts. All right. Red Rock Resorts, I think, still pays a dividend. But either way, they're getting close to their all-time highs. They're not a heck of a lot different than Wynn Resorts or Las Vegas Sands. This is just showing how the traders are playing these travel stocks. There's arbitrage opportunities everywhere. Yeah, 2% dividend. Meh. All it right. looks like it's going to roll into the next. Wyndham Hotels and Resorts, WH. Yeah. Very, very similar. So Wyndham, if you look, it's coming back down, but it's coming down to a nice level. There's got to be about 25% from support there. On Wyndham. Yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah, it's looking like we got a, a nice runway to 100 bucks. Yes, this is what I was thinking. And Wyndham is huge. Um, then we have Hilton Resorts. Now remember, Hilton is global and they're not just Vegas. Um, and also Hilton is big on business travel. So Thanks. I think Hilton can still go higher because they continued to go high all through the pandemic. They didn't really get like drama um now we have LUV. We're getting Southwest into airlines. Airlines. Southwest Airlines. These next guys are airlines. Um, with the exception of I got Rolls Royce stuck in there because Rolls Royce is engine engines for airlines. But either way, I think Love looks amazing. And so does the next airline, Delta. Yeah, it actually looks uh like it's did a big drop here so we may be able to get in for a nice dip buy here on LUV. Exactly. Delta same type Delta of thing. Delta made one already one higher low. Do you see that? So that's a pretty nice recovery. They had a lot of drama over Christmas time because there was all the issues of people not showing up for their flights, remember? Yep. They had like a lack of staff because people were non-vaxxed and blah, blah, blah. So those dramas seem to be chilled out. So if you're a bottom-up trader, these are good opportunities. Um, American Airlines. Yeah, American Airlines. Same different story, right? Definitely look like it's finding a bottom here. Exactly. Now, one that is so surprising is the next one. Ryanair, they're on a spike. But look at that. That's Ryanair. They're like a budget airline. They're super budget airline. But why did they spike? They figured out a way to hedge their gas prices. 
So they just had some really good earnings. So if that doesn't tell you anything, that they just had amazing earnings and all they had to do was hedge some cash prices, and I don't think it was legendary, that shows us that there's opportunities left in all the rest. It's going to cycle through. Definitely. United, United Airlines, Airlines Holdings, UAL. United Airlines, equally juicy. Again, it looks to me like that consolidation is just about done. The next yeah, one I wanted to bring in. Jets. J -E Jets and ETF. Travel ETF. So, I like to throw an ETF for people because sometimes not everybody wants to do like a whole find your own and do your own DD. When you buy an ETF, a lot of people have done some DD for you. So that's why I thought Jets looked pretty good. And I looked into it and they have all the top airlines and travel stocks. All right, Boeing. We're we've been an hour, so we're going a little bit over, but we're gonna try to roll through. There's just so a couple Boeing. left, and we'll go really fast on the next. Travel was my most exciting thing. It's May 31st. It's time to get these travel stocks. That was my most important. But Boeing, Boeing has pretty much sorted their drama. If you're ever gonna get back into Boeing, if you like it, they've been increasing their production. They stopped killing people. So Boeing and Rolls-Royce are starting to look good. Rolls-Royce took a drama with Boeing because they make the engines. Here's so, Rolls-Royce, R-Y-C-E-Y, Rolls-Royce at $1.76. Wow. Yeah. So hmm. Boeing tried to blame Rolls-Royce on the engines failing when there was all those problems of the Ethiopia and the Indonesian planes going down. They tried to blame Rolls-Royce. So that's why it came down. They're ready to come up. So just wanted to say that. I think it's juicy as heck. Tesla, back to 200 Tesla. bucks. Tesla is looking so ridiculously good, and there's big catalysts coming for Tesla. So there was just a whole bunch of money just went in for AI. People, all these companies can file for AI grants. Tesla's one of them because they're putting AI all through their cars. But the next thing that just came up that's really juicy is there's a huge grant coming out from the U.S. government, and this is for EV charging. So do your own DD. This news just came out five days ago, so it'll be there in Google. But big grants for EV charging. So that's why I wanted to bring up Tesla. And oh, yes. FFIE Faraday. is new to me. FFIE, Faraday Future Intelligent Electric Inc., FFIE. <laughs> So they are an electric vehicle. People thought they weren't going to get any vehicles out the door. They thought they were just concept because they look way too cool, but they've actually got one and it's going out the door and it's damn cool. So take a look at their car and it's ready to rock. So also they qualify for these grants. Next, NBM. I had to bring up NBM. NBM is juicy. It had a big spike yesterday. I think we were up eight or 9% yesterday. Trying to find my chart here. Um, eight or nine percent yesterday. And the reason I brought that up is there's a, and I, I think this is what did it. There's a very big new South Korean um, IPO coming out that's battery charging, and MBM is going to be working with them. So keep your eyes peeled on MBM because they can get that arbitrage spike. Okay. Speaking charge of point, charge point holdings. These next ones, the next four, the only reason I brought them up is these guys all qualify for that um, big AI grant, and they have to have the grant um, applied for before the end of June or early July, I think it was, which means that gives us like probably four to six weeks to get positioned before they announce who's going to get all this grant money. So I think it's a good time to do your DD and take your pick of who's going to be your fave to get that grant, and then we can get the pump. All right, BP. Same. Trend line. Um, BP, you wouldn't think that BP is big on charging, but they are. They're one of the top charge points in the UK and China. I didn't realize that till recent. I brought up last week or a week before Shell, but BP, UK and China, top charge points. Interesting. Yeah, and that was new to me. Trend, big trend in the last few months up here. Yes. And then we have Workhorse. Now, as we talked about Workhorse, like maybe a month or so ago, Workhorse is actually making these charge points and selling it to the others. So they're like the picks and shovels of the EV battery charging stations. Definitely close to a bottom. I mean, you would exactly. think. I mean, 
Problem is when a stock gets under a dollar, it gets really, really shorted. So you have to be really careful. But they also um, qualify for this grant. So keep your eyes peeled because when the news comes out on that, you'd still have time to tap it if you need to. Just be and careful because like, like I said, when a stock gets under a dollar, it gets really, really hectic. It does, okay, especially in the US. NK Blink Charging 674. Mm. Not so bad. Again, pretty much at the bottom. And these guys also qualify for this big grant. And like the grant is huge. Go back and do your DD and look at the news. But it was about five days ago. It's huge. And there's really only a handful of charging companies that could qualify. So they stand to put a big chunk of cash on their balance books. So that could really light up the EV industry. All right, so we're done all the charts, but we wanted to go through two cryptos for one of our members who requested um, yeah, Arbitrum. You know them, don't you? Yeah, Arbitrum. These are two cryptos that are relatively new. Arbitrum has just kind of come out, and it's one for you to definitely put on your radar, put on your watch list. You can see over the last six months, it's been as high as $1.78. And I just like to mark the high, high, and the low, low, so I know my mm -hmm. trading zone. And it's been as low as a dollar three, and it's currently sitting at dollar fifteen. So, if you wanted to get into this trade, I think if you get in at these levels or lower, you're setting yourself up probably pretty good, so that when the next run comes in crypto, you'll probably see this, you know, make a nice run back to one fifty, maybe two dollars, yeah. and you'll get a nice return on your investment in Arbitrum. And they're also very heavily involved in NFTs, so there's a lot of stuff going on with both of these projects. This is Optimism OP. And you can see they haven't been around that long either, but they've been as high as like, let's say about 320. We're going to mark the high high at 320. And they've been as low as just recently, like about a dollar 30 zone. And it's really pretty much trading right at the bottom right now. So obviously you don't want to chase a falling mm -hmm. knife. Let it go a little bit lower if possible. And then it consolidate at the bottom a bit first. I think yeah, back if you are lower, then you're probably setting yourself up pretty good um with these trades so that's those are our picks we went through a <laughs> lot of trades a lot of picks we went through stocks crypto gold oil and uh we got a chance to hear um amanda and her opinion on everything so is there anything else you want to say amanda before we say goodbye no, no. i just wanted to say if you missed anything just go through the nice thing about it being on youtube is you can pause and take your list out and do your own dd but um, aside from that, get it. And then next week, we'll be here to hash out another. Thanks, yeah, guys. so Thanks, end of Chris. May, guys, and they say, and you know, sell in May, go away. So clearly, they're selling today, uh, last day in May, red day. Um, we're going to be watching the markets very, very closely. Thank you for watching with us and joining us and being here for this week's session. If you have any questions, concerns, please put it in the description of the video. If you have any picks you want us to look at for maybe next week, you can put it in the description of the video and we'll do our best to look at the charts and bring them up next week. Amanda, thank you for joining us once again. Thank you, thank you for your analysis. Thank you for your chart analysis and your wisdom. And for everyone that's watching, thank you for watching. If you like these videos, smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere and subscribe. And thank you for watching Rich TV Live. These videos are all over social media. We appreciate all your support everywhere. And have yourselves a great day. Your host of the most, your boy Rich from Rich TV Live with Amanda from Big Castle Homes saying, have a great day. We'll see you soon. Peace.